At the age of 15, I moved to Narragansett, Rhode Island. Galilee is one of my favorite places to enjoy leisure time at the beach, taking in the natural beauty and watching the wildlife. In my opinion, the most interesting part of this environment is the commercial fishing fleet. I've always enjoyed fishing as a hobby, and to see it on such a large scale was fascinating. I recognize that it is often an overlooked aspect of the town, and with the opportunity in high school to create anything of my choice, I jumped at the chance to create a way to share this aspect of Narragansett with others. I enjoyed learning about how each part of the industry functions separately and as a whole. Interacting with the knowledgeable members of this community is an amazing experience. These people were some of the nicest I have met, and they were happy to educate others on their livelihood. After long days and nights of filming, interviewing, and research, I am proud to present the Gem of Galilee. I'm Jason Sawyer. I'm the captain of the uh, fishing vessel Cody. I've been commercial fishing since 1990. Now, normally this time of year we'd be squid fishing. Because of all the restaurant closures, nobody buys squid. So we're catching scup, whiting, butterfish, fluke, flat, you know, that stuff. Like I brought in five different species. I brought in more, but what we concentrated on, yeah. four different species. And I'm hoping one of them is good price and the guys will make a nice paycheck. Right now we're doing what we call swill trips. Go out and just get a little bit of everything because the prices are so up and down with restaurants being closed. So this trip I went out and I caught four different species, got a little bit of each. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. There is a very connected community in the industry, each relying on the other. They depend on each other to support their livelihood. Once the fish are caught, they need somewhere to go between the boats and their final destination to be consumed. My name is Jeremy Raposa. I'm with KSJ Seafood. I own three commercial fishing vessels and I run the takeout facility. All right, so they come in, they come to the uh, well, we have a conveyor belt, so they come to the end of the conveyor belt and the guy will go down the fish hold and he's called a lumper. And most of our fish are packed in totes. And so he'll go down there, try to get the totes underneath the fish hold, and then he'll hook them up uh, with a hook in each handle. They're called box hooks. And they send them up. The guy up on deck will run the lever um, that the box hooks are on and they come up. I got one guy swings them once they get to the top of the hatch right over to the guy that's at the end of the conveyor. So my boats that I own, all three of them, go out uh, for trips. Right now, we're at somewhere from five to seven days, uh, at most eight, because they're going to a, right around 200 to 250 miles out to sea. Now the conveyor system comes all the way up into the building and it dumps out on a coal board. At the coal board, we have a man at the end that pushes the fish into a box um, and we get right around, you know, 65, 67 pounds. And then we take that, we put ice on it, then we put a cover on it, and we stack 25 of those to a pallet. And when the pallet's done, we take it and we put it in a refrigerated truck. Uh, most of our trucks go down to New York, but we have them sometimes go down to uh, uh, North Carolina, okay. sometimes up to Boston. So mo most of them go to big fish markets, like wholesale fish markets. Okay. Uh, most of it that goes to New York goes to Fulton Fish Market, okay. which is the second biggest uh, fish market in the whole world. Beyond the large boats taking long trips far away, there is another fleet of day boats that target a single, popular creature. These lobstermen prove a very key part of the local economy driven by seasonal tourism. While these hardworking individuals are competing against each other for their catch, they still are a tight-knit community who work together for the benefit of all.
Yeah, my name is Peter Broder, commercial fisherman. Um, represent Rhode Island for uh, on the take reduction team, which has a lot to do with whale entanglements. I'm um, past president of the Rhode Island Lobstermen's Association a couple of times. I run um, a, a lot over here of eight acres that we store our gear on, all okay. the commercial guys do. Uh, how many pots do you have? I, I can fish currently 500. I fish them right outside along from Narrow River, all along Narragansett by the Coast Guard House, okay. all the way down Point Judith. I fish out by the island. I okay. fish off to the east, off Sakonet. So I go no farther than about 14 or 15 miles from the lighthouse. I sell primarily 100% of my lobsters to John Q. Public. I have a license that the state allows us to do that. I pay an extra um, $25 for an endorsement to sell from the boat or from the end of the dock due to the COVID. You know, we take turns. This is a very um, diplomatic and cooperative dock that we work on. In addition to selling lobster directly to the public, many go to local restaurants. Popular establishments such as George's and Champlin's are at their peak in the summer. Nothing beats a lobster after a long day at the beach. Uh, my name is Amy Gould and I work for Champlin Seafood and I've been here for 21 years. We go um, and we grab it from the tank depending on the size and the weight and then uh, we bring it upstairs, we throw it in our steamer and then we cook it for about 10 to 12 minutes. They are typically served with fries and coleslaw or some other starch. I absolutely adored learning more about this part of Narragansett. It was truly enlightening and broadened my understanding of the town. I hope this has piqued your interest and I encourage everyone to take a drive down and experience the community. There, you will see why it truly is the Gem of Galilee.